We have been living in our outdoors RV trial trailer full time for over a year now. And it gets us to places like this. But before we moved into the trailer, we had been researching for almost two years which trailer we wanted to buy. And as part of that research, we did the outdoors RV factory tour in La Grande, Oregon. We are super excited to be back here in La Grande, Oregon to do another factory tour, but this time we're taking you along. I'm Diana. And I'm Matt. And we are from Adventurous Way. And we are on a quest to visit all 419 national park units across the US. A few months ago, Outdoors RV ran a photo contest and we submitted a load of the photos of our trailer in some of the beautiful locations that we've been able to camp in. And we won the grand prize. We were super happy with that, but on the back of that, they invited us to come and video a factory tour, which was a really, really exciting opportunity. We had a call with them a few weeks later and they said they'd been watching our YouTube channel and they'd seen one of the mods that we'd done to add some insulation to our trailer. They were so impressed with that mod they've actually incorporated that into their new designs. That completely sealed the deal for us, and we decided to embark on the 2,000 mile round trip to come here to video the factory tour, and this time we're taking you along with us. Hello, so we are standing here right in front of the factory floor right now, and I'm standing here with Darren Nelson, and you are the product and sales manager here at Outdoors RV. That's correct. Been in the business for 26 years, helped start the company here 10 years ago, oh, wow. and one thing you're gonna notice on the factory tour here today is that we're building a product that's designed for the rugged mountainous terrain that we have located around here mm. and in Western Canada and in Alaska. Wow. And one thing you're gonna see in our trailers is many of us here actually own and use the trailers. I've owned three of our trailers here <laughs> and bought them and used them with my family. Um, our director of manufacturing, who you're gonna see along with the tour here, yep. he owns two of our trailers. <laughs> um, our service manager owns a trailer, our accountant owns a trailer. Our production manager owns a trailer. Wow. Another sales manager that works in the sales department owns six of our trailers. So you guys really believe in this product and you, you experience it. You know what it needs to do to work in this terrain. Yes, and absolutely. When we're talking about our PD meetings and different things of what to do on product, it's stuff that we may have experienced ourselves yeah. in camping. Yeah. And so we know if we're designing and building a trailer that works for us and this climate around here, yeah. We're gonna be able to allow a customer so many more things they can do with an RV Perfect. than the standard trailer that's out there today. And we've seen that in, in our trailer as well. Yeah. So where do we start on the factory tour? So we're gonna start with, we consider the number one factor is the foundation. Perfect. You can't have a rugged built yep. trailer if you can't <laughs> take it off the pavement. Exactly. So we're gonna start looking at the chassis and the component suspension and what we do there that makes it the rugged mountain tough trailer. Wonderful, and where are they built? They are built here locally. One thing you're gonna see within the tour here and probably a little interview is Jamie Baker, our product development manager. We hand um, design our trailers for each floor plan. Yep. Not by an off the shelf chassis. So you don't have the cookie cutter style chassis. Don't have chassis. the cookie, cookie cutter style chassis. Wow. And that allows us to put bigger holding tanks. Yep. Allows us to put extra angle supports, yeah. shocks, shock plates. Designed exactly for that floor plan. For that floor plan. Perfect. And where are they assembled? They are assembled right here within about 50 yards of where we're standing. That's where we're headed next. Let's head inside. Okay. So Darren, you brought me inside here and this is the chassis building, right? That's correct. So what happens in here? So what happens in here is we will, we will build, the chassis are built at our chassis actually first assembly building just right down the street. So these are not Lippert designed, Lippert built, no, nope, they're chassis. custom built here ourselves off of our own designs. Wow. Okay, so we start with all US made steel. Yep. Every chassis that we build is on I-beam chassis. Okay. And if you look right behind where you're standing here, you can see a rack of chassis that are here that are all freshly painted. You can see the safety chains are on them there and you can see the different outriggers. And this is then going to be flipped over as you can see right here. Yep. And now they're gonna put on the fully enclosed underbelly that goes side to side, front to back. So this is upside down. This is upside down. And we're now sealing it in. We're sealing it in. This is, the, this is now our first layer of our Climate Design Four Seasons package. Wow. Because our customers not only want a trailer they can take 15 miles up the gravel road, they also want a trailer that you, know, you and I have talked about, yeah. shoulder season yeah, yeah. or camping. Diana likes to do some skiing. Well, they, they can use it when it's not the best temperature outside yes. also. That's our first layer. Perfect. 
So we've got the underbelly on. What else are we seeing here? Okay, so another thing you're gonna see here is the axles are put on. One thing that we also will do is we oversize our axles that go on our trailer. How do you mean oversize? What does that mean? So you can have a trailer that, let's say the trailer's gonna weigh 5,000 pounds. Yep. You can put an axle that would match that completely, give the customers maybe 1,500 pounds of carrying capacity, and that's gonna be just fine for the customer going to the KOA campground and back. Yep. Our customer does a lot of boondocking, or maybe they want the opportunity to do boondocking. Yep. So we oversize the axles that in turn gives them greater carrying capacity. Gotcha. So for instance, this trailer working on right here is a 22 ah. FQS. Yep. Okay. So it's right around 27 feet overall length. Okay. We have 5,100 pound axles on wow. it. And we put the GVWR at almost 9,995 pounds for this trailer. Wow. So your axles exceed the GVWR, unlike what we've seen on a lot of trailers where they assume tongue weight is going to take on some of that. Right. We will take, we would oversize the axles to be able to get that for our customer. Yeah. And so what are they doing right now? Talk me through this. Okay. So now they put on, we'll look at the stabilizer jacks and different things that they put on. They're now going to flip this over so that they can start putting in the holding tanks. Gotcha. And they'll also put in the, the next layer of the climate design four seasons package will go in next. Okay. So before they flip it over then, talk me through, I, I can see, is this an auto leveling system this, this trailer's got? Yes, so you, both of you happen to be here at a real special time for us. This was our 10th year anniversary. We started in May of 2009. Yeah. And so now it's a few months after May in 2019. Wow. And we're building a special 10th anniversary trailer for our dealers and our customers. That's awesome. And one of the features that we're putting on this trailer, that's a standard feature, is auto leveling. Gotcha. And so this now is either the fourth or fifth generation auto leveling system. And one thing from us, we don't like to put out the first generation of something. Yeah. Because that could come with some opportunity for improvement sure. on that. And so this type of system has been out for about four or five years now. You Our, feel it's tried and tested and now it's ready for prime time. Well, that's what we, we're assuming, right? Yeah. But still with that, we test it. So gotcha. Dave Van Cleve, the director of manufacturing, the trailer that he bought earlier this year, we put this system on his trailer. On his own personal own trailer. Own personal trailer, and he's been using it down at the lake, been using it up at our camp out, again, to verify that it's all working yeah. correctly before we go into full production. Gotcha. That's fantastic. So is this something that we're going to see standard on all trailers in future then? Not all trailers, because at some point, auto leveling does cost some money to yeah. put in that. And not every single customer necessarily needs that feature. Sure. But for the right customer, it's an awesome feature to just yeah. simply push the button in the trailer levels itself. Yeah. And so where we're going with this, based on feedback from our dealer network and listening to customers, is the auto leveling system will become a standard feature in our Titanium Series product here in the near future. That's fantastic. That's awesome. So tell me now, so we've flipped it over. Uh, we've got the underbelly underneath, we've got the axles on, we've got the, um, uh, the self-leveling, the auto-leveling system is installed. Uh, what else is going to happen in here? Okay, so not only going to happen, but I want to show you a few things too. Okay, so if we come over here. One thing you couldn't see when it was flipped the other direction is part of, we saw that fully enclosed underbelly underneath here. Yep. This is now the next layer for the Climate Design Four Seasons package. Gotcha. So you're gonna see this is R15 reflective insulation and that goes side to side, front to back on the entire trailer. Wow. Again, this is adding insulation for your holding tanks and your whole trailer from the underside. Because this is beneath the frame still. This is still beneath the frame, yes. Wow. Now, another thing is looking at ground clearance. Yes, something Gra we love. <laughs> ground clearance is important for our customers and even for ourselves for where we like to go camping so if you look down here on the frame itself this is what's called the front cross member yeah what we do is we take the i the the a frame and we weld it through the front cross member you can see it's all welded here yep on the back here plate here it's welded here and then when it comes over here it's also welded here so wow. if you were to look at Let's say you and I want to move a D5 cat or yep. a big caterpillar yep. someplace. 
and we're going to get a trailer to haul that. Any trailer that anybody's going to rent us is going to be designed just like this. And that's for strength, is it? It's for strength. That's why you have it here, welded here and here and through there. It's for strength. And then what it also gives us is ground clearance compared to this being tack welded underneath here. Ah, I see. Gotcha. So if this is tack welded here, you have a tack weld here, a tack weld here, not as strong. And you lost And now what have you done with your ground clearance? It's gone down here. That makes sense. So something to look for, I guess, on these trailers is, is like, how are, you, how are these connected together? Not just for strength, but also for like usability. Yes. Like how does that change how you use the trailer? Yes, absolutely. I did not know that. That is awesome to see. And that is again something that if you're simply going to be going down the pavement to the yep. pavement park, maybe it's not a feature that you just necessarily need to appreciate. Exactly. But we know there's customers out there that, oh, yeah. that they may camp like that sometimes during the year, but they also want to go to that cool lake. For sure. I here. mean, just thinking now, if our trailer had this underneath the frame, that would have limited us to so many of the spots that we would have wanted to get into because it would have pulled the whole A-frame lower. So now it would have had lower hitch and everything else would have been a knock-on. Well, the place that you and Diana stayed earlier this week, yeah. more than likely you probably couldn't even got to that spot. We wouldn't have even got close. No, no, no not at all. So. Okay, so we've got the, the chassis all built, we've got the underbelly installed, the uh, insulation here is in. What else happens in here? Let's go back over here. Okay, okay so what we're looking at, at back here is the rear end of the trailer, the bumper area. But one thing I want to point out is there is a feature that a lot of our dealers and customers put on the trailer. It's called the, the rear hitch that's on the back. Yes. And you're going to see where we tie this hitch actually welded into the overall frame of the trailer. Wow versus just being welded onto this and you can put 50 pounds back there. Yes, but which we love actually, because this thing is so sturdy. I mean, I've stood on this thing before to try and reach up and clean and whatever, but that hitch is so strong. We have just a bike rack on there, but that thing will not move no matter what we do. It is, it is really sturdy. And you look at our customers that are the adventure type customers yeah. and go places, and they pull up here for tours. They have so many different things <laughs> on the back of this that it's a feature we want to make sure that we put on here as durable as we can. And, and what is this hitch rated to back here? That hitch rated is rated to, to 250 pounds. 250 pounds, wow. Whenever you put a hitch on the back of a trailer, then it really comes down to the responsibility of the consumer sure. to make sure that if they put 250 pounds back here, that they've balanced out the entire trailer for of that. Of course, yeah. And so if we were to go out and put a hitch back here on this and rate this at four or 500 pounds. Yeah, it would suddenly throw everything the, off could throw it off. So we figured that on 250 pounds, it's been very successful for our yeah. customers on that weight rating. So. Awesome. So Darren, we're standing here looking at one of these uh, rolling frames being built now. Um, I'm seeing some things on here that I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. This seems like a dirty weld or something on the top mm -hmm. here and these supports, what, what's going on here? So again, part of our off-road frame is this is what's called a cambered weld. So the easiest thing to explain to the customers, if you look at a flatbed semi-truck going down the freeway, empty, yep. you'll see it's bowed like this. Yes. Why is it bowed like that? So if you put weight on there, it straightens, it straightens out. Gotcha. This, even though we're building the, this has an eight inch I-beam frame for a 22 foot trailer, wow. we still want to be able to put in the camber welds and we camber weld it this way. Yep. So that we put the whole level of the box on, it's like you have a shock absorber on the front and the rear of the trailer. <laughs> Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Then, in going further with that, because our customers are going to go on dirt roads and different places, we put this extra angle support right over the uh, suspension here. We put another one on the suspension piece here. And on the hanger and over Another one well. suspension piece here. And then I'm, I'm looking at your suspension. The suspension is different from what I've seen on a lot of trailers. And this is something that we love ours. You guys install the Moride. CRE 3000 and the shock absorbers on here as well. Yes, and so in looking at your your truck, yes, would you imagine buying your um, F-150 yep. truck with the FX4 package or 4x4 package on it and not having <laughs> good suspension or no. shocks? No, and we've upgraded it because it's so important. And so from us, if we are wanting to take this trailer ourselves or promote this trailer that people can take it where we take it, we wanted to put what we considered the best suspension system on this. So if we start at the CRE 3000, yeah. okay, 
The main reason for the CRA 3000, it, is, it has rubber bushings in here versus steel on steel. And it has this area here where the suspension has travel in it, so we can get an extra three inches of vertical travel. Wow. Very important for the place you just went camping. Totally, and, and a lot of the places we go camping as well. And actually, I, I love this system on ours because I can go up curbs at gas stations. I don't have to worry about it too much. Diana hates it for that reason. I keep going up <laughs> curbs at gas stations. But then this is something that you have on all trailers? Every trailer that we produce now is standard with this. Wow. Now, from Moride, you can just simply buy this part. Yeah. We actually go another mile and we buy the Moride Shackle Kit. Ah. So the Moride Shackle Kit upgrades this bushing in here from a nylon bushing to a bronze bushing. Wow. And it has greasable fittings. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven greasable fittings also on the suspension system. That's incredible. And we've met people who have had those, those shackles fail because they're not strong enough. And these are the much stronger ones on here. Yes, versus you think of a nylon bushing versus yeah. a bronze bushing yeah. on a very important part of your trailer. Yes. Now, another thing is you mentioned is you look at shocks. Yes. So could you imagine or fathom your <laughs> F-150 pickup truck with no shocks on it? I'd rather not. <laughs> the industry out there, again, building a trailer for the pavement Yep. Don't necessarily need to put shocks on, but where our customers are going, we put shocks on. And Indeed, as you can uh, see, yeah. we, it's designed right into the chassis. So this plate is already designed and welded in here. Then if you can get a picture of the extra large shock plate that's on here, and this is also standard on every trailer, and we now are using KYB shocks. KYB shocks, if you talk to anybody in the off-road world, yep. they know all about KYB shocks and they actually have a nitrogen monotube that's also included with them wow. to give you even more of that shock suspension. So this is true kind of off-road technology that you're putting as standard on every single trailer you build. Yes, because we don't want to limit a customer, even if it's only two times a year they're going to go that type of camping. Yeah. We want them to still have that availability through the trailer that they own. That is amazing. And, and we do love this system. We, we have a lot of the stuff on ours that's the same. I think we've got the previous generation of shocks on ours, but otherwise this system just works so well for us. And we take our trailer places and we've seen some crazy articulation in these in these axles. And without that, we would not have made it to those boondocking spots. No. Now you take that because you can't just do one or two things. You have to do the whole package. Yes. And we see that in a lot of things that we do. So let's say we did all that and then we didn't put a good tire on. Yes. So if you look at every single tire that we put on is at least an E-range 10-ply tire. Yeah. And we use the Goodyear Endurance tire that's made here in the USA. Yes. And that's so important. Like, it's not of the uh, our tires are literally our contact with the ground. And we hear from so many people who say, when you buy a new RV, the first thing you got to do is change the tires. Because so many RVs nowadays, they come with cheap tires or they've been sitting on the dealer lot for a long, long time with cheap tires on and your first trip out you get a blowout and it causes incredible damage to the RV. We love the fact that ours came with these Goodyear Endurance tires and that wasn't even something we knew to look for when we started this journey and it was something that we learned here at the factory. A lot of customers don't know to look at that. They don't yeah. know to look at the chassis. They don't know to look at all the shocks and suspension. They want to go in and look at how pretty the floor plan is. Yes. And we want to make sure we're doing the whole package on it still needs exactly. to be a good floor plan. Yeah. But if you don't have a good foundation, suspension, tires... And this is what really drew us to the brand, and uh, we really like. Nice. Right. So then on top here, I'm seeing another few bars and bits and pieces. Can you talk me through like this bar inside, uh, these ones here, some of the wiring and piping going in? What are we seeing here? Okay, so what you're going to see the next... What they're prepping for now is they're prepping to put the holding tanks in. Another sidebar of us building our own chassis is we now can control some of the places where we put the cross members to be uh. able to put larger holding tank capacity. So you're going to see these are going to be bars that will hold a holding tank in. From underneath. From underneath, yep. right? They start running some of the wiring because you're going to have to put the monitors the on tank the tank. Sensors. Yep. All right. And so that's some of the stuff that you're starting to see in here. And it happens to be he just bought a tank in over the top of this here that he's getting ready to install. <laughs> So the, the tanks, so this is, you said a 22 model. How big are the tanks on a model like this? 
So this model right here is going to have 80 gallons of fresh water capacity. Wow. Might need to check this for sure. I know it's got 40 gallons of black and 40 gallons of gray. Wow. That is incredible. And, and those big tanks, again, were something that, as we did our research and went through this process, really drew us to Outdoors RV. And I must say, I hadn't realized that that was something that you had allowed yourself to do because you custom built these frames. But seeing them now makes sense. And you've got the, the holding tank here right above the axles. So the weight distribution, the same on ours, is just really, really good. So, what side note here on us. You think we, how we camp along here, around here, would like to have bigger holding tanks? I bet you would, yeah. Absolutely. So we're kind of designing this for ourselves, too. Exactly. So. And big holding tanks are so important to us because that keeps us off-grid for longer, more comfortably. We don't have to worry about bringing extra bladders or jugs of water in the truck. It's just there in the trailer. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, I can see some more wires going on on this side here. These aren't just the tank sensors, right? What do we got over there? So this one that's going across here is going to be like for your brake, brake wires yep. and stuff back in the back. And then also part of the wiring is going to be for the new auto leveling system that's going on right here. Gotcha. And all of that wiring then is completely protected within the underbelly, within the frame, basically. And if you look, if you can see it over there, we've actually have it routed out to go through there. Yep. And we're auto looming it to go through there also. Gotcha. You follow me? Yep. For that protection going up and down the road. Totally. So it's not going to rub on that. that yeah. See, and he's putting metal. it on right there. Yeah. That way it's all super protected. Perfect. So this this frame is getting towards completion. When they roll out of here, where do we go next? So they roll out of here. They're going to roll out, and we'll be able to take a quick look at a, a unit that has all three tanks on, and then from there it's going to go into the floor department. Perfect. Okay, Darren, so we are standing outside here now looking at one that's got all the tanks installed, but there's a few new pieces have appeared as well. What else have we got on here? So, in looking at those different layers, part of our Climate Design Four Seasons package is the heated holding tank area. Yes. And so we talked about that reflective insulation going side to side, front to back, above the underbelly here. Yep. We now take that reflective insulation and wrap it around each of these tanks also. So they've like got that? like two layers of that insulation, yes. haven't they? Wow. Then, as you're going to see, here's our dump valves. Yep. Okay, on solid pull rods, not underneath. Don't pull that, my foot's underneath. But. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and what we do is then, when we put the heat duct in, you can see the heat duct right here. You can see where there's route outs in the heat duct. Gotcha. So when that's put over and you have your furnace running, you're going to have heat that's going to drive right down into this valve in area to keep your tanks from freezing. And also to keep the valves from freezing as yes, well, I guess. Yes, keep the valves from freezing as well, yes. That's perfect. So we've then on ours got the 12 volt heating pad. Where does that fit into this equation? So on the 12 volt heating pad, we put that on the freshwater tank. Okay. And what that's designed for is some of our extreme campers who are going to do some camping in the winter months and they're gonna travel from spot to spot. Gotcha. So how the system's designed is when your furnace is running, it will keep the tank, the valves from freezing. Yep. All right. When the tanks, when the furnace is not running, you're going down the freeway, you're going three hours. Yeah. That's where- Cold air coming underneath the trailer. Cold air coming underneath the trailer. And so that customer knows that they can put RV antifreeze and things in their black and their gray water tank to keep them from freezing, sloshing sure. around. You're not gonna put RV antifreeze in your freshwater tank. <laughs> so now you have the heat pad on the freshwater tank that you can turn on when you're going traveling between places and it keeps yes. that valve area from freezing. And how much, like how cold could we go between the insulation here and the furnace running to keep the tanks warm and also the, the 12 volt heating pad? We pride ourselves here on looking at consumer data. Yes. And we're selling between 75 to 100 trailers a year to Alaska. We sell a couple, two or 300 units a year to Canada. Wow. And we have customers up there for the last 10 years that have been using those in those climates yeah. and giving us feedback that, man, sending us pictures of here I am at six below zero. So in terms of like temperature, could I take this down to like zero Fahrenheit? Or how, We've how had many customers take it down to zero Fahrenheit. We've wow. had many customers take it even below zero. But what you're also going to find, and this is in our climate design video, just being very truthful with everybody, is the temperature also depends on humidity, wind, yeah. all those type of things that are going on. Yeah. And a question you were asking me earlier about, do we offer skirting yeah. on the trailers? Yes. Well, we don't offer skirting on the trailers, but I can tell you a story about a pilot. We had a pilot 
that was from Denver. He was based out of Casper, Wyoming, bought one of our trailers, and he would go up there and stay on his pilot duties. And he skirted the trailer because going Wyoming in January, sometimes you could get to 20 or 30 below zero. Yeah. And that just adds another little protection of the wind getting up underneath the trailer. Gotcha. And he said, yes, Darren, at well, well below zero, it was a little chilly, but <laughs> nothing froze up and I was still able to function in my trailer. That's fantastic. I don't think we'll be taking our trailer that cold, but what we really appreciated was we have our skis and our snowboard with us and we want to be able to go places and ski and snowboard. We want to stay in our trailer. And so we might be doing that with, with hookups so we can stay warm. We might do it if we can find somewhere that's going to have uh, some boondocking open. Uh, but really, we want to make sure the trailer is going to be OK in those conditions. And I'll be honest, I think if it starts to get towards zero Fahrenheit, I'm going to freeze. So Well, and on that, we're not designing these. These are not designed to very few customers. This is one example of the pilot sure. that are going to take these into that type of extreme. And when you get well below zero and you have six inch walls in the house yeah. and this big of floor, <laughs> you have pipes freeze, right? Yes. We're doing this for exactly like you and Diana just mentioned, giving that customer the extended places to be able to go, exactly. whether it's whether it's a hunting trip in November, whether it's skiing, whether it's a trip to Maine, those type of things. So. Perfect. Okay, so I can see all the holding tanks installed. We've got some of the plumbing appearing. Where do we go next? So going next, we're going to go into the floor department. Fantastic. That's Let's where we're headed. Head inside. Okay. So Darren, we've come inside now and the trailer we've just seen has got the underbelly, all the frame is constructed. I'm guessing the next thing is the floor. The next thing is the floor. Perfect. And so where we're at here is the construction of the floor. And you're gonna hear us say time and time, and time again that the construction's the same on our trailers. So no matter if you're looking at a 21 RBS that you have, yep. or you're looking at a 280 RKS, all the floors are constructed the same. Even travel trailer, fifth wheel. Yep, all of them constructed the same. Okay built for that rugged mountain type camping. Yep. And so in looking at here, it's a two by three constructed floor. And then we use exterior grade, five inch tongue and groove plywood versus wow. other types of materials that could be used that customers will never so see. So there's no OSB. This is all good quality plywood that's in here. Absolutely. And you can see on this one, they've already decked most of the floor. They're just down to this last piece that they'll be putting on here after break. And this is just then one continuous sheet that goes edge to edge, front to back, all the way along. It's a con it's a tongue and groove piece, as you can see yep. here, that we put on there and then it goes all the way. Yes, yes. gotcha. So and how so, do they get this onto the frame? And so onto this, you're going to see now here, I'm just going to turn around. This is going to come up and you can see its position here. Yep. Right? This is now the underside. And then this is going to be flipped over down to here. And this is going to be where they've worked on this. So we'll talk about some of the things that they've done at this position here. Gotcha. So when the, the floor is then turned over, the floor comes onto this side. And, and what am I looking at here? What's this? This is actually probably a 90% done underside of the trailer. Going to be flipped over onto that trailer that we, we saw out there yep. with the holding tanks. Gotcha. And so what they've done here is again, another one of the things of the Climate Design Four Seasons package is in between those studs, we're putting the Pink Panther insulation and a ah. double layer of Pink Panther insulation in the floor. Gotcha. So not only do we have the underbelly, yep. we have the reflective insulation side to side, front to rear. Yeah. The reflective insulation covered around the around tanks. The, tanks. Yep. the heat ducts down into there. And then we have two layers of insulation in the floor. And that's going to be a butt. So this is upside down. So you've got the membrane, two layers of insulation, and then the five eighths plywood on top. Yes, absolutely. Wow. So Darren, all of this is this membrane, but something is different here. What am I looking at here? So this is going to be over where your tires are at. So yeah, so this is like the wheel well. Wheel area. well area. Yep. So instead of just leaving this material or putting an ABS plastic material here, we use galvanized sheet metal in these areas. You can see they haven't put that one on yet. As again, another place where our customers are gonna go up off-roading yeah. for some rocks and stuff hitting up, another layer of protection for your underbelly or floor. But that's already so well protected by the plastic underbelly and everything else. And then this is another layer on top of all of that. One thing you find with us is it's layer after layer after layer, both that's from fun. the rugged construction side of it and the insulation side of it. And so if you did have a blowout or something on a tire, would this help to protect it? It would that? help. Definitely help. Perfect. 
So Dave, you are the head of manufacturing here at Outdoors RV, I believe. Yes, the director of manufacturing. Director of manufacturing. And how long have you been with the company? Uh, I've been with the company for 26 years. Wow. So you know a thing or two about what's going on around here. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so Dave, talk me through what we're seeing happen here. This is pretty dramatic. Well, this is what they're doing on a pre-assembled floor. They're actually setting it onto the chassis, preparing it to bolt it to the chassis. So this right now is upside down. So they're going to lift it and then lower yes, it on that yes, way. Yes, they do have to flip the floor. They build, most A lot of our uh, support stations build all the product upside down so we can wire it and they don't have to be on creepers to wire it what they'll do they'll line all the wirings that wire right there is for the patch and so this falls now right side up and this is just going to lower yeah the they're going to lower it right down and then position it on the outriggers and and they will drill and leg those to the outriggers and so here you can see the wires connecting up for the various different yeah all, and things yeah, all those wires are for the five-point leveling system that gotcha. he's running through now. Because this is one of the anniversary models that we're seeing. Yes. And here, I guess, you can, again, you can really see this structure coming into place. You've got the, the underbelly, you've got the insulation layer, you can see the tanks inside the frame. Then you've got this membrane, then the double thickness of the insulation, and then the 5 8 plywood on top of that. Yes. Yeah, they got those wires ran through the, the raceways. Now they will lower it down onto the chassis. And then they've got to line up all the plumbing and everything else as well, I guess, for the tanks. Yeah, the last thing we want to do is create pinch points on what, not, not just wiring, but plumbing. Yeah, so just taking their time, getting everything lined up, to make sure it's all, all looking good. What are these weigh? The floor? Yeah. The, the floor probably, I would guess, is somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, with wiring and insulation, somewhere around 500 pounds. Wow. So that, that weight and that thickness and that, that strength is so critical to the entire kind of foundation of this trailer, right? That's absolutely. So we've seen the floor get put onto the trailer and now essentially we've got a flatbed trailer. What's next? I assume it's the walls, is it? No, the walls aren't next. Okay. What's going to be next is going to be cabinet set and plumbing. Okay. So right here behind us, you're going to see this is the cabinet department. We get all the raw lumber over at plant two. Yep. They cut all the raw lumber up and put it in everybody's station and the cabinets are being built here throughout to here and then you're going to see like over here to your right here this is going to be some tub bases here this is going to be the kitchen sink and the wall yeah. here <laughs> and then right over here behind you can see this is now starting to be put on the trailer gotcha so they kind of assemble it through and place it inside and so if you look at this one you can see this one has the sink here and the bathroom wall. Yeah. And you look over right here to the left, over the top of that, you can see the actual sinks being installed. The next thing there, there's gonna be the converter. Yeah. There's gonna be the fridge, the kitchen sink. So all those things are being put on in this department here. Gotcha. And then one of the things I see over here is, I see a load of wires. Now I remember this from the factory tour last time and I got really excited last time about this. Tell me what we're seeing here. So let's go over and take a look at this and we're gonna get our director of manufacturing, Dave Van Cleveland here. He's going to talk a little bit about our wiring. Perfect. So maybe you can talk me through what I'm seeing here. I remember this from my factory tour last time, and it's a, a good bunch of wires. But what specifically am I seeing here? Well, what, specifically what you're seeing, this, this is our wiring harness. This is all our uh, connectors, which we have outsourced on these harnesses so we can get Molex connectors on them. So it's plug and play at our distribution center, which is our power center, which is located in this cabinet. And when, then these wires, they just disappear out across the trailer? Yes, they, these obviously are coming up through the floor. They go into your, into your power center. Then they'll come up through walls to get power up the ceiling, yep. out to the slide outs, to the fans. And one, one thing that's unique that we do is we run those wires to those fan locations. And if it's not specced in on the trailer, it can be added later without the fatigue of trying exactly. to pull wires. And that's exactly what we did. Our trailer didn't come with a fan installed uh, above the bed. It had the vent, but no fan in there. And we were able to install our own Max Air Max fan just using the wires that were there. And as soon as we removed the vent, there was just a couple of wires there sort of uh, taped off and, and ready to go. So yeah. uh, it's a really nice feature. And then the other thing I see here is plumbing. So we're starting to get some plumbing coming in here. 
Yes. Uh, talk me through some of the plumbing things. Uh, what, they're, what they're doing is, is they're going to run all the drain plumbing, which is ABS, to the tanks. They're going to run the vents up through the cabinets to vent all tanks. They run your fresh water lines in. They cap them off. This is the first of three tests that we do. They will do an 80 pound air test for 10 minutes. If it does not hold, wow. they need to locate the leak. So the whole thing, even before any appliances have gone in and walls have gone up, you do a test to make sure that the plumbing holds pressure and there's no leaks. Absolutely. After, after they have all the appliances on the plumbing, plumbing finished, then it does go, go to what we call sidewalls, which you can see the unit ahead of that. And they do start the process of putting the, the exterior of the coach together. They'll set the sidewalls, the front and the rear. I am really excited to see these walls coming on. I think that's where this goes from being a flatbed to a proper travel trailer. That's right. A big change on the physical big appearance of the coach. And you said this is going to get tested with the air pressure. Has it been tested now? This just finished and passed the 80 pound for 10 minute air test on your fresh water lines. The fresh lines. And yes. what about the gray and the black? Do they get tested as well? Yes, yes they do. We, we have a pump machine that will pump and fill the black and the gray tank up and we'll let it sit for 10 minutes. And we're doing two things at that point. We're testing A, does it leak? And B, does our monitoring system show the right values? Yes. And I see now we've got a few more bits and pieces installed here. It looks like there's some propane lines coming in here. Yes, they, all the propane li lines are installed in the coach at this point. They have not been hooked up to the appliances. That's the, the next item they'll do after this water test. They'll put the appliances in. And, be, and before they actually hook up the propane line, they will plug these lines off and do a three pound PSI test for 10 minutes on the propane as well. On the lines to make sure they have no leak in their, in their fittings. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, this trailer here is now looking pretty exciting. It looks like we've got walls on the trailer for, um, now. Yes, this is a sidewall station where they actually set the walls on the floor and chassis bolt them down, secure the cabinets, then they will put the front and the, and the rear section onto the coach. Wow. So these are the exterior walls of the trailer now? These are the exterior walls. Uh, they don't look as shiny because they are covered with a mylar protective film on it, which we leave on until they go through the, the roofing process. Gotcha. And the wires come out of the back here, these are for the tail lights? And tail, the tail lights, backup lights. And how are the walls attached together? How do they hold them? They are, they are held with zinc coated screws because zinc's rust and it also is a protection against electrolysis because we are screwing through aluminum. So and you've got the two different metals. Metal. Two different metals, which also we'll see later. We also do a wood fill in the aluminum around the perimeter of the sidewall because that is our lagging points. That's where the screw fasteners will actually screw in. So the screw is not just holding on the aluminum, it's actually biting into the That's correct, we're getting, a sec we're getting a, a second anchor. Yep. Well, why don't we head over to the wall shop and let's see how these walls are built. Let's. This is part one of the Outdoors RV factory tour. Subscribe to see part two when we will tour the delamination shop where the walls are built. Then, in part 3, we will see how the rest of the trailer is put together. So hit that subscribe button to see parts 2 and 3 of the factory tour and other Outdoors RV related videos.